All right, hello everybody and welcome to the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Lindsay and I'm part of the education team here at the Sea Life Center. And if you didn't catch on to my pun, uh, today we're talking about whales. I'm really excited about it, if you couldn't tell. Um, I'm in fact wearing my whale necklace. I'm also wearing narwhal socks that you can't see right now, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, here in Seward, Alaska, it's a pretty snowy day, so my narwhal socks are tucked up inside my snow boots. But I'm really excited to talk about whales. We're gonna learn some basic things about whales, learn a little bit about a couple of species of whales that we might see here in our Alaskan waters. Um, we're also gonna do a little drawing activity toward the end. So if you wanna go ahead right now and draw, dra grab some um, paper and pencils, um, anything you wanna color with, go ahead and do that now. Keep it off to the side because we'll be using that momentarily. Now, um, we're gonna learn a little bit about some connections we have with whales too. And let's start off by figuring out what are whales. They seem really different than us, right? Well, believe it or not, whales are mammals like you and me. So in order to be mammals, we have to share some common characteristics. Now, our mammals, our whales, they are breathing air like us with their lungs. Of course, they're able to, as marine mammals, able to dive down, hold their breath for longer periods of time. But of course, they do have to come up to the surface to breathe eventually. So we've got that in common. Also, as mammals, they are warm-blooded, so we are regulating our own body temperature. We're not relying on outside conditions to do that for us. Um, we're also both vertebrates, so go ahead. Again, find your spine on your back. You have your vertebrae. Our whales have their bones, too. And um, as mammals, our whales are giving live birth. They're nursing their young, and they have hair. Now, I know that last one sounds pretty weird, um, most whales will lose the um, little hair they may have, like a dog's whiskers or a cat's whiskers, really tiny. They're going to lose those eventually, um, pretty much as soon as they're born. But they do start out with hair. Now, our hair keeps us nice and warm. Our whales have an adaptation called blubber. Uh, this is a layer of fat around them that helps keep them nice and warm, especially in these uh, chilly Alaskan waters. But you can see we're already off to a great start. We have these connections with these whales. Um, but uh, whales as a whole, um, when I say the word whales, what I'm really saying is I'm grouping them all together. So we've got our whales, our dolphins, and our porpoises. And they're all in this big group called cetaceans. They're all cetaceans, and we can break it down into smaller groups and learn a little bit more about um, the two groups we have. So we have odontocetes and mysticetes. Now, when I hear the word odontocete, the first thing that comes to my mind is orthodontist. And I'm sorry if that brings up any traumatic memories from some of you, I apologize. Uh, but those words sound really similar, and that's because they are. So these are our toothed whales. This includes our dolphins and our porpoises. So they have teeth, a lot like you and I, but there are a couple differences. Um, our odontocetes, like our dolphins and porpoises, they only get one set of teeth where we have our baby teeth, we lose those, and we have new ones coming up underneath. They just get one set of teeth. And also they are going to um, have the same shape of tooth in their mouth all across the board. Uh, we have, you know, we have our molars in the back, we have canines. Um, our dolphins, they're having more of a conical shape. This is an orca tooth. We also have our porpoises that are going to have more of a spade-like shaped tooth. So our dentocetes have teeth, and they also only have one opening at their blowhole. Um, if you imagine your nostrils travel up and sit at the top of your head, um, that's how our whales are breathing. They're coming up to the surface to take air in. Um, they only have one opening for that. Those are our dentocetes. On the other side of things, we have our mysticetes. These are our baleen whales. So instead of having teeth, they have baleen. And these are um, rows and rows of baleen plates in their mouth. And I'm going to show you. We've got this really cool bio fact here, you guys. Look at this. This is humpback whale baleen. And this is really awesome. They have these rows and rows that they are using to capture smaller food items like plankton and krill and even small fishes. Typically they're taking in big gulps of water 
and straining out that water on the sides, that those um, that baleen will entrap the um, good food inside there, and they're able to scrape that off with their tongue. So that's a humpback whale baleen. Baleen is made out of keratin. If you're looking for something else that's made out of keratin, look no further than your fingernails and your hair, because that's another similarity we have. So that's what our um, fingernails and hair are made of, just like the baleen. Um, along with that, our mysticetes are also going to have two openings at their blowhole instead of one. So remember, that sitting at the top of their heads, they've got two, kind of like we've got two nostrils. So here in Alaska, um, it's a very snowy day here. We have uh, our fair share of visits from both mysticetes and odontocetes. Uh, today, though, I wanted to talk about uh, just a couple specific species of whales that we see and maybe some things that we have in common with them. And first up is our beluga whales. Um, now here in Alaska, we have our Cook Inlet um, belugas that are unfortunately now on the endangered species list. We used to see them pretty frequently up near Anchorage, which is about two and a half hours away from here in Seward, um, two and a half hours north. If I was driving, it'd probably take a little bit longer, but um, they used to be pretty frequent sightings, and now they're a lot more rare. But our belugas are odontocetes, so they've got teeth, they don't have baleen, and they have that one opening at their blowhole. And a couple of years ago, we had the amazing opportunity here at the Alaska Sea Life Center to rescue and rehab a baby beluga whale named Tyonic. And he is now has a home at SeaWorld in San Antonio, Texas. But our uh, beluga whales, they have this really cool nickname. They're known as the canaries of the sea. Uh, they get that name because of the sounds they make, the communication sounds they make, um, they sound a lot like birds. And I'm gonna play a quick sound clip of that. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. And along with that, I have a really cute photo of Tyonic. So give me one second. <laughs> that they do remind me a lot of birds chirping and sounding, so I think they do deserve that nickname. But any of you at home, if you like to sing, um, I won't trouble you guys with my voice, but I do enjoy singing um, when I'm in the car by myself. If you like to play music, if you like to listen to music, you have something in common with our canaries of the sea. How cool is that? Now, next up, we have our orcas. Now, um, here in Alaska, we have a couple different groups of orcas that we see. Uh, first off, they are odontocetes. Remember that orca um, tooth that I showed you earlier? So they are our toothed whales. And our odontos, um, excuse me, our um, orcas are also known as killer whales. And we have a couple different groups of them that we can see in Alaska. We've got our resident orcas. They're more predictable. We can. Um, well, we're pretty sure when we'll know when we'll see them pretty regularly. They have similar spots they go to. Um, they're just a lot more predictable, and they have a smaller range of travel. And they're mostly eating a diet of fish. We also have transient orcas, and these groups, um, they're a lot more unpredictable. We're not always sure where they're at, um, where they're going to show up. Um, we might not see them for a couple of years. Um, we'll always be in a different place, but they are, their diet is mainly marine mammals. So um, it's a pretty big difference between fish and marine mammals for them. And last but not least, we have our offshore orcas that are further off in the middle of the ocean. And there's a lot more we need to learn about them. But what we've recently discovered is that they eat sleeper sharks. Um, that's part of their diet. Uh, we did research, um, we have done research on sleeper sharks here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And that is one of the discoveries we've made. So it's pretty cool. And these animals, I'll show you a photo that my coworker Kara took. Um, she was lucky enough to see some orcas. And they are highly social, and they live in these groups known as pods. Um, typically, these units are headed by a female, typically the mother. And they are, um, 
the mothers and sons can live their lives together in these pods. And it's really incredible that they have these really unique um, social connections. I'll show you guys also a photo of a really cute baby that Kara took. So you can see there's a baby possibly with his mother nearby. And it's really neat to think that they have these social connections that we do too. And I know that right now it's been really hard to hang out with people, but think about your pod of friends. Think about your, whether that be your close group of friends or your family. Obviously those orcas were not keeping the six feet apart social distancing, but hopefully, um, thankfully with technology, we're able to keep in touch with our friends and family through social media and um, phones. And hopefully once we're back open here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, you guys can bring your pod back down and come hang out with us here in person. But until then, we're gonna keep doing these programs online for you. Now, last but not least, I wanna talk about my favorite, which is the humpback whale. I have never seen a humpback whale in real life. I'm hoping that this is my year to see one. As we do get them, they come up and visit us here in Alaska. In Resurrection Bay in the summer, they um, come up here to feed. So we see a lot of feeding, which is really awesome. And um, they are big migrators. So in the winter months, they'll make their way down um, to Hawaii, um, warmer tropical areas, and they're not focused on eating then. So we get them up here um, during the summer when they're feeding. So it's really cool. Now these are mysticetes. If you remember what I said earlier, they have these plates of baleen made out of keratin. So I'm gonna show you a video in just a little bit. So hang tight of a cool feeding style that they do known as bubble net feeding. But our humpback whales, they are very acrobatic in the water. If you've ever seen a photo of a um, whale watching trip, a lot of times it's probably a humpback whale that you've seen, or if you've even had the opportunity to see them in real life, which I hope to do someday. <laughs> uh, here's a great photo of a humpback whale breaching. He's um, jumping out of the air, um, crashing down, doing, they'll do tail slaps, they'll do flipper slaps. Um, they're just really acrobatic and looks like they're just having a lot of fun. So I want to know if you guys at home, if you like to um, jump up and down, if you like to jump on a trampoline or um, swim in the water, maybe practice breaching uh, like a humpback whale, especially nowadays when we're stuck inside a lot more than we might want to be. <laughs> um, it's great to just get some exercise. So maybe practice being a humpback whale. All right. so. Hopefully you can see we have all these connections to these animals. Another really cool thing about humpback whales that I love is that we're able to identify individual whales based on their tail, so their tail fluke. And researchers will go out, they'll take photos of their tails, they have different patterns on the underside, and we're able to match individuals, much like our own fingerprints. So I thought it would be fun today, and I'll show you really quick. Here is a fluke of a humpback whale. I thought it'd be really fun if we draw our own humpback whale flukes. So I'm gonna switch it to my document camera. And we're gonna go ahead and draw our own whale fluke. And I am the first to admit I am not the best artist, but the great thing about this is it's gonna be an in, our own individual whale, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna start out giving it a little bit of an arch on the end, almost like a half moon shape. And you wanna give a little dip in the middle and I'll show you why in just a second. So once again, I apologize. This is not the best whale fluke. So there you go. And you can add the whale to the other side. You can add water, add some waves. He's making a deep dive into the ocean for some food. Now, when the anatomy of the whale fluke is really interesting, so areas that are um, people that are looking to identify them are at are looking at this um, leading edge. And you don't need to label this, I'm just labeling it for you guys to see. Leading edge, we have our trailing edge. 
This is the right fluke, the left fluke, and then this is called the notch in the center. And each of these edges is known as the, oops, sorry about that, <laughs> perks of being left-handed. These are our fluke tips. So you guys can go ahead and color that however you want, name your whale draw. I'm personally going to use the stamp pad and use my own thumbprint and make it super individual there. <laughs> And while you're working on that, I want to show you guys a video of um, that feeding method known as a bubble net feeding. So I'm going to show you while you're working on your humpback whale flukes. This is a video of some humpback whales. They're in a group doing what is known as a bubble net feed. So they're diving deep down. You can see that tail fluke going down. And what they're doing is they are corralling a school of fish, maybe something like herring up toward the surface by blowing bubbles around them. It's creating almost like a net. And they're going to blow those bubbles. are going to push those fish up toward the surface. And they're all going to come up to the surface and take a big gulp, as you can see right there. And this is known as that bubble net feeding. So it's a really cool uh, group effort that they're doing. And of course, those birds are trying to get some leftovers there. Um, that's a really awesome um, thing that they have come up with absolutely amazing. All right. But hopefully you guys are still working on your whale flukes. Um, and you can see that we have these really cool connections to these animals. But what I really love is that while we're also connected, we can make a difference and help them out too, um, wherever you are in the world. And unfortunately, a lot of times, uh, a lot of plastic pollution ends up in our whales' homes and their backyards. And we can make little changes in our daily lives to help make a difference. So one thing that I love to do is reduce my use of single-use plastics. So I like to have a reusable water bottle and put cool stickers on it. Uh, you can use reusable bags, um, skip the straw, making little differences like that. Um, those will prevent those from going into our oceans and in our whale's backyard. Even if you're in the middle of the country, it doesn't matter. You are still a part of this too. Um, all rivers eventually lead to the ocean, so don't feel like you're left out of this either. But I love finding these connections to these amazing animals. It makes me feel a little bit more amazing, and I hope it does the same for you. Um, if you guys want to show us online, share your whale flukes online, uh, tag us on social media, let us see your creations. Um, otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us here today at the Alaska Sea Life Center, virtually of course. And uh, give us a like on um, our videos if you like them. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we are doing these videos every day at 12 and 2 on YouTube. Also, check out our Facebook page because we have a lot of updates going on there. We're also um, doing live streams, um, live videos there as well. Um, in fact, we have one coming up today in just a little bit. So a lot of exciting things going on here. And we'll look forward to seeing you in person soon. But up until then, um, we'll keep hanging out with you guys on the internet. But thank you again, and have a great rest of your day, you guys.